Hello YouTube. It has been quite a while since I've done a video on a computer. And that's mostly because nothing has really changed when it comes to my hardware. I've been using this old iMac. Um, well, you know, it's old now. It wasn't a couple years ago when I was using it. As pretty much my every everyday computer. Um, but it's really my dad's, so I had to share it. So, But the whole, main reason why I had this computer out again... It's because I recently bought this massive behemoth over here. This is a 21 inch Trinitron display. And it is quite deep. The main reason why I felt like making a video on this is because I could not find more than maybe one or two other videos on this kind of monitor on YouTube. And also because I have a couple questions. But first I will quickly go into a story of how... I've gotten to where I am right now with this monitor. So I found it on eBay um, because I was looking for a CRT after I pulled this one out of storage and was reading up about how there's a couple benefits to these old types of monitors. So I landed on this because I do like Apple products and as a matter of fact this does work with a PC though at first I wasn't entirely sure because originally when I first got it like last week I plugged it in with, um, let's see, I think I have it over here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see too well. Yeah, it's just a simple... Okay, well, that's not the right one. Anyway, it's somewhere over here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a VGA to HDMI. <laughs> and this monitor ended up requiring too much power for that thing, and it wouldn't display an image except on this old iMac that I have. Still, I still have both of them. The other one doesn't work. But I ended up going to a com specialized computer store and they ended up fixing it for me. So that ended up working perfectly. <laughs> so I did end up getting it to work with my PC. But I have it right here open on my Mac first because I wanted to see if it still worked. And I feel like the picture quality is a little bit better on the Mac. Though I have some questions and I'm I couldn't find any answers. I'm hoping someone here will be able to answer them because even on the Mac, which does recognize the display, if I go to about this Mac displays, it does recognize it as an Apple display, um, but at a significantly lower resolution, and it doesn't give me the option on the Mac in order to um, adjust it to anything significant. I mean, it's 75 hertz, that's fine, but I get these options, which isn't the full resolution of this this display. But even then, I'm starting to like this resolution because it takes it more of the screen. But anyway, what I was noticing was the screen geometry is off. You can see the black bar gets wider near the end edge, and it gets really thin right about at the bottom, and it's perfect. But there's no way to change the screen geometry. And from my research, you would, it requires a couple drivers, but you know I couldn't find anything about that. So I'm kind of at a loss when it comes to that. But it's all right for now. Very crisp. Really like the colors on this old screen. <laughs> But it's about all I can really show you from Mac. I can't really show any performance. I haven't used this computer for pretty much any games forever. It's the first time I've used this in several months, really. Um, it still has some of the stuff I used to do on it. But, yeah, I will reboot this and connect it to my PC. And I will demonstrate a little gaming with it. But... Just give me one second. I did want to say one thing before I booted it up on my PC. One thing that surprised me, that, well, initially that didn't surprise me on this, was that the onboard USB hub worked on the old iMac. But on this, this one, it actually did work as well, which did surprise me because I did not think Apple would continue to support such an old thing. So I had my dongle um, for my wireless mouse attached, and that's what I was using in the video earlier, the first part. And I just wanted to 
point that out, which is something that I was a little impressed about. But I will continue getting this iMac out of here and putting my other display in place. And I will show you the interesting three monitor setup choice that I have. Very mismatched. But, alright, I'll be right back. Alright, I think I finally got all this jumbled mess all hooked up correctly. So I will now power it on. I just wanted to film that because these old monitors make a lovely sound when you power them on initially. So let's hope it works. If it doesn't, you won't see this. That was the Xbox controller. Now I have this one set up as my primary display because when I play Forza it requires it to be the primary display otherwise it goes off this one and it won't let me go to the full 85 hertz that this monitor can go to. Yeah, you know, at least what the manufacturer recommends. I don't really feel like overclocking or anything because I'd rather keep this display for as long as I can. So yep. Yeah. All three of them should be powering on at this point. You won't see anything from these until I log on, so I'll do that. Hold on. Tapping with one hand is quite an experience. So you can notice that it's already noticeably dimmer. Well, that was a little stupid, thing. but I did end up having some NVIDIA drivers that I could correct the display slightly, and it is. It's satisfying. So the first thing you can notice is that, well, at least I hope so, is that the display is much higher resolution than last time. <laughs> it looks like it's going to load up Discord on it initially, so I will exit that out. But first, I see what else I can show you all three of them. Yep, all three the same PC. It's interesting. Yeah, these are both trying to turn on displays, but you know, quite a gap in between when these were made. I think I think this is a, a flat a flat display. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like it does bubble a little bit, but I guess I'll give this time to look at the entire thing. This thing is huge. I don't understand how I managed to get this upstairs all by myself. But I managed to do that. Before I continue, I want to apologize for how I sound in this video. I think I'm a little sick right now. I'm not entirely sure. And also, I'm kind of winging this video, so I really don't know where I'm going with it. But I guess I will go ahead and just demonstrate, let's say, Forza with this. <clears throat> won't hear any sound because I have my headphones plugged in. But that's not really important for this video because this monitor doesn't have speakers anyway so <sighs> but I already have it configured for this monitor and luckily this game has the option to change it to the 4x3 aspect ratio so you can actually hear them through my headphones that's funny <laughs> Interestingly enough, the, the flicker of CRTs is actually not too noticeable on camera. Then again, I am filming in 4K right now, so this is probably eating up my battery life and my storage, which is already very small. So I'm trying to keep this relatively short for that purpose as well, just because I was also wanting to test out my new camera on this phone. So I think that was the car I was using last. So I have an idea. I'm going to try to hold this phone up with my knees. Might be a little strange, but we'll see. See if I can actually continue filming it. I can use two screens with the controller because otherwise you won't really be able to show anything. So we'll see. That is a terrible angle. Okay. 
I wish I, I should probably get a tripod if I make a habit of making videos like this. But I will make sure that I have it correctly oriented once I get at all these fucking menus. Okay. There. Of course it's nice. <laughs> I won't really be able to see the f perfect colors. At least in my opinion, I think they're a little more superior. But I think what I mostly notice, it's not the colors, but the the refresh rate, the extra 25 frames per second, I feel like it does make a little bit of a difference. And I feel like I also have noticed a little bit of an improvement when it comes to my reaction timings. I don't really know if I'll, I'd be able to notice what they say is perfect. Or virtually non-existent um, input lag with CRTs, but I feel like there might be some some difference. And of course, I'm playing very badly, but I'm just gonna drive around for a little bit, not too long. So I really don't know what caused me to want to buy one of these things, but I went ahead and did it, because I was, I don't know, it's a lot cheaper than getting an LCD, and it's kind of a nostalgic aspect, because I grew up in school, not on the, not on an Apple, but on other CRT screens, and there's just something about them, I like the, the glass display, I like tapping on it for some reason, I don't know, I'm a strange person, but whatever <clears throat> I'm about to wrap this up because I'm sure I'm not gonna have much more space but that's about it the main reason I made this video is because I was wondering if anyone out there would know um, if there are any, is there any way to adjust the screen geometry you know the pin cushion the screen position the size all that which on pretty much any other display has them built into the front of the monitor such as, oh, I might as well just call this quits because that's pretty much it. Such as this one. It's got these, it's got all the buttons on the front. But with Apple, of course, they have it so that you must have the drivers installed on your computer and that you can do it all from the control panel, which presumably would be in, like, I don't know, OS 9 when this thing came out in 1999. And then I'm sure they had support for it for a while in OS X, but obviously by, I don't know, what whatever operating system that one has on it, I lost track, to be honest. Obviously, they don't support that anymore. At least natively, maybe there's a way to do it. So yeah, I would love to know if there's a way to adjust the screen geometry, because, let's see, let's see if you can notice. It's worse on this one, because the screen resolution is different. But, I know it's nitpicky, but all this part of the display, especially at the top, is not being used for anything. And it's just, it's kind of disappointing that I can't get it all the way. But, even if I can't, it's alright. Let's see if I can focus in on the, on the pixels. So I believe this is 1600 by 1200. And it looks really good in game. The only thing that it doesn't display really well is very small text. It might be a little blurry, but even then, it is perfectly acceptable. And I use this screen to display text <laughs> and play some other games on that don't rec don't really support high resolutions or not resolutions. I mean refresh rates. But this video is already getting way longer than I wanted, so I'm probably going to call it quits in a couple seconds. I was trying to think if there was anything else I had to say about it. Um, <clears throat> not really. Let's see. This was the monitor, I think, in my IBM PS1 video that I made. I don't know, six, almost seven years ago at this point. <laughs> And because of the problems I had with the connectors, I ended up... Okay, so I, I remembered what the problem was. This is HDMI to DVI, which connects to an extension of the HDMI, 
which connects to an HDMI to VGA, which is in, goes into the back of the monitor. And that was the original setup that I was using with with this behemoth, but it required the external power. Damn it! If it'll actually focus on it. Yeah, it required external power for some reason. I assume because of its size, but this one doesn't. And so I ended up buying. <laughs> VGA straight to display port and it has onboard power so I didn't have to worry about any of that so it booted up perfectly but I think that's about it apologize once again for this terrible terrible narration on my part and lack of any direction in this video but if I decide to continue with this maybe I'll remake it but at least for now this will do um, and hopefully see you next time because I plan to, well, we'll see, we'll see how far this goes, but I want to keep this in its original form. I will put the, the bottom back on the ruby, but I was thinking maybe one day down the line, take the ruby and make that into a, a newer Mac because I was, I'm a little wary about hackintoshing my PC and having a partition on it in order to to have mac os so i was thinking maybe i can just <laughs> use the ruby case and buy a mac mini or something and make that out of it so yeah so i might have some future content coming but that'll be it for now see you guys later